Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. It is Monday, June 17th. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are here in the studio with Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And her jazz hands. And we have a very special guest. From Broadway's Pretty Woman. Charlie Pomp is here. Woo! Yay. Look at all the applause. We will get to Charlie, but first, our top five. This campaign is coming to an early close. I think it might be my favorite play of last season. Really? I loved it's Hillary and Clinton, strong stance. Lucas strong. Nath's Hillary yeah. and Clinton, mm -hmm. uh, which is about Bill and Hill. In, Bill a, and Bill. in a way. In a well, way. It was. Uh, in an alternate universe or something. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you should go see it because you only have a another week left. It was supposed to go through July 21st, and now it will close on June 23rd, which is Sunday. And of course, it stars... 2019 Tony nominee Laurie Metcalf, who will be back on the boards next season and who's afraid of Virginia Woolf, and John Lithgow. Tony winner John the Lithgow. The fantastic yeah. John Lithgow. Uh, started previews March 16th, uh, played 37 previews, 77 regular performances. It was always limited, but they're going to get out a little early. So go see it this week. And another play is hitting the boards this season. This is exciting. We have a new play by Noah Hadel called... Birthday Candles, and sure. it's starring Deborah Messing, who's Ooh. coming back to the Broadway. Okay, are you ready? This will be at the American Airlines Theater, and Deborah Messing will span the ages of 17 to 101. What? And no one Talk else, about who else could do that but her? What? What a range. <laughs> what the range. That's yes, a thing? That's a thing. I can't wait to see it. It's uh, directed by Vivian Banesh, and it will begin previews on April 2nd, 2020, and officially open on April 21st to play a limited engagement through June 21st next year. Wow. Wow. It's quite a range. Yeah. And these co-stars are going to be finishing the hat in London. Yeah. Oh. So I don't think any of us saw this coming. I did not. Jake Gyllenhaal and Annalie Ashford are going back to Sunday in the Park with George, which of course they did on Broadway two years ago in 2017. Remember, it wasn't Tony eligible. They were like, we don't need Tony. Yeah, they were, they were just <laughs> We're just doing it for the love of the art. That's right. Well, now they're going to do it for the love of the art again. This time in London, it'll play starting June 11th, 2020. At the, what's the name of that theater, Beth? The Savoy. Ooh. Yes, the Savoy. It's a, that's a nice theater. It is a nice theater. We saw Dreamgirls there. Mm -hmm. We saw Funny Girl there. Right. We saw a cabaret <laughs> we saw a lot of girls. there. We've a been, lot to, of girls We've been there. to that theater. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Emily Ashford played George and Dot. And uh, Sar Sarna Lapine directed it. And of course, it played at the Hudson Theater on Broadway. It was a fantastic production. So I'm glad that London will get to see it. Audiences across the country are going to have their own chance to build a prom. Oh, I've got the score in my head. We're talking about the prom. They're going on tour in 2021. I always assumed they already announced there was a tour. I kept usually making that mistake. Usually these tours are announced pre-Tonys, and right. usually they're like, we're launching soon. But no, they're taking their time, and they're launching in Providence, Rhode Island, at the Providence Performing Arts Center in February 2021. A lot of tours start there. At that yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a great place. Uh, really far away. It's currently running at the Long Acre Theater. I saw it again yesterday. You did, I know. I did. I took you my took daughter. Your daughter. She loved it. She loved it. Um, you know all about it because practically. Who is her favorite character? Barry Glickman. Of course. <laughs> she's nine. It's not really appropriate for children, but she's sophisticated. Um, she can handle it. If she can handle the share show, she can handle the prom. <laughs> she's a Broadway girl. Um, you know that this was going to be made into a movie, right. which is expected to, by Ryan Murphy, expected to debut in September 2020. And of course, you know, everyone who has ever been involved with the prom has been seated in this chair, <laughs> including Chad Begelin, Bob Martin, uh, Matthew Squar, Beth Lovell. Josh Lehman. All the people. Everyone. <laughs> all the people. Caitlin Kinnanen. Everybody. So anyway, if yeah. you're going to have a chance to see it on tour in two years. So the prom is going to just keep getting more and more famous with that movie and then the tour. So it's yeah. not going anywhere. I mean, it's, it's going to live world. on forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the screen, screen star is taking on an almighty role off Broadway. Another one we didn't see coming. <laughs> Definitely didn't see this one coming. <laughs> Gary Busey. That's a blast from the past. Who, before he was um, an amazing reality TV star, Sensation. was um, an Oscar-nominated uh, fantastic actor. Yes. I mean, he's a very well-respected actor. He will be starring in the pop rock musical Only Human, and he's playing God. Of this is directed by N.J. Aguna, and it has a book by Jess Carson and a score by Mike Squalante. 
I don't know why. Uh, saying, like. It follows Jesus and Lucifer, who were co-workers before they were enemies. When an extreme case of creative differences gets the best of them, all hell breaks loose, literally. Wow. So this is happening off-Broadway, uh, starting October 8th, with opening October 21st at the Theater at St. Clemens, and... It sounds like something you maybe you have to be there to see it, right? I mean, I mean, you should. I mean, that's be there true. Most theater you have to be there, but this one feels like you're gonna want to be there. Just in your description alone, I think it's a must see. There you go. Must you just see. gave Beth. It's, it's gonna, gonna go on the front of house. You're welcome. A must see. You are welcome. Only here. everybody wants those words, Beth. That's right. That's uh, what else is on the site? Well, we are about to have a new vlogger. That's right. From Aladdin, Michael James Scott. He's going to vlog live from the lamp. He plays the genie, of course. He's going to do it for five... Oh, I thought it was live from the lamp. You are incorrect. <laughs> You're incorrect. Could be either. It's both. He's living yep. live from the lamp. Yep. Um, it, so that's going to start next week. Mm -hmm. And we have a gotta dance with another Aladdin person with Josh, Josh Drake. Drake. Yep. Tell us about Octet. Octet, the off-Broadway hit musical. We, they came in, the cast came in last week and did a club Broadway.com video. One of, one of the songs. It's an acapella musical. Uh, right. Also, we woke up to an amazing first look at the cast of West Side Story, the Steven Spielberg movie. Amazing. And they look really fantastic. And I just learned that the costumes are by Paul Taswell. You know, as the costume designer mm -hmm. of Hamilton and many, ah, many. And more. there's a bunch of Broadway people. Lots of involved. Broadway people. I just discovered Maria follows me on Twitter. Well, there you go. You can just forget <laughs> it. You can retire uh, now. <laughs> there's also a Q&A with Christy Prattis. Who's starring in On Your Feet in the West End. Also, King Kong is going to Shanghai. You can read about that. Uh, the Secret Life of Bees is a big hit off Broadway. That got extended. And I just want to give a quick shout out. I went to the Woodstock Playhouse this weekend, which is a theater upstate. Support local theater people. And I, and I saw Mamma Mia. This Here we go funny. again. But not, not that <laughs> one. Was the original. There, was there a mega mix? Was it a what? Was there a mega mix at the end? Oh yeah, they did. They oh, oh, oh they did the they mega did mix. Uh, the cast was fantastic. So go see them. They're at the Woodstock Playhouse doing shows all summer, and they're fantastic. Michael Jablonski directed it. He's a Broadway vet. There you go. So I'm Love out. It. That's it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Miss Caitlin, will you yes. tell us about our guest, please? Gladly. Yes, we have Mr. Charlie Pollock here in the studio with us today because he recently joined the cast as. Pretty and Pretty Woman as Philip Stuckey. He's here to talk all about it. He's previously been seen on Broadway and You're in Town, 9 to 5, and Violet. His screen credits include The Good Wife, As the World Turns, The Good Fight, and more. Make sure you follow him on Instagram at the Charlie Pollock. Not just regular, he's the one. Make sure to leave all of your questions in the comments below. And please welcome Charlie and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Hello, Charlie. Well, hello. Well, hello. How's it going? Now, is it Stucky or Stucky? It's Stucky. It's Stucky. Stucky. Okay, I want to make Stucky. sure it's, that you it's know. It happens all the time. I'm going to ask there you the go. most obvious question. Since childhood. <laughs> What's a nice guy like you yeah. doing playing a jerk like that? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's something about my face. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. I just got a jerky face, maybe. So you're just stepping into the role. You started yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Wow. Tell me how that's going. It's been amazing. The... Uh, the 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 whole cast and company has just been super super supportive and the show is such a like a joy bomb that I you know I get to go in and sort of sour it up a little bit but it's been <laughs> super fun and I had some experience with the show before I did a couple of the readings early on oh. and so as Phil Stuckey and so I, I feel like oh it's all come full circle so you're you're stepping back into stepping it stepping back in what's the key to playing this role because he is kind <coughs> of a schmuck I'm yeah. sorry to say he's a lawyer he is a lawyer uh, not that all lawyers are bad no that's, no they're, that's they're amazing, we're it's an amazing profession um, uh, the, I guess that the key is and I, I think I've really put my finger on it uh, is to wear a white suit if you find yourself in a white suit you're the bad guy <laughs> Just so you know. This is interesting because white hat, black hat, that kind uh -huh. of thing. But no, it's the, the opposite. hat's not the hat. It's, it's the, the opposite. suit. It's the suit. You're in a white suit. All white suit. You're bad. Has the show changed a lot since those readings yeah. you participated yeah. in? What's different? Well, uh, the I had this like crazy song that was all about like uh, making money and selling things, and it was like this chanty thing. That's gone. There was another song in its place that uh, that got cut in Chicago that Jason... Like Jason apparently Danley. Danley sang beautifully because he's got the greatest voice in New York and it sang 16 bars, which has been fun for me because I only have to sing 16 bars, but uh, a waste for that beautiful voice. But so that that got cut. Um, and, you know, uh, Vivian's character just really, really, they strengthened her mm -hmm. so much. She's super inspiring. And I, I think 
in the movie she was inspiring, but they really honed in on that and like really drilled down on it, which is awesome. That's awesome. So you get to come back and sing this amazing score. Not too much of it, not though. Not too much. You're backstage a lot. I am backstage what a lot. What are you doing back there? Well, I'm still not comfortable enough to do anything but listen to what's happening. <laughs> I, I started, I started trying to watch an episode of Parks and Rec, and then I got panicky and turned it off and just sat there <laughs> flipping along you don't in miss my your script. Cue. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about how you got to Broadway because I don't know if everyone knows your story. No. I want to go back a little bit. You're from Texas. I am from Texas. Tell me how you came to New York and, and that story. Yeah, so I grew up uh, in Spring, Texas, which is outside of Houston, and I uh, I uh, started doing plays in high school, like everybody. And uh, this high school that I went to, like public school drama education in Texas is outrageously great. It's a lot like Ohio, actually. There's like a lot of uh, a lot of money thrown at it. We had this amazing theater. I went to high school with Jim Parsons. Like we, there's like a little talent in that yeah, little area. There's and, a lot of people. And then the high school next to ours was like all these amazing people. And so you know, it was like a thing you could do. So I, I had this realization one day when I was like leaving football practice to go to play practice, where I was like, you know, I'm a lot more successful at this theater thing than I am at this football thing. It hurts less. And there's all these smart, funny girls around. Shouldn't I maybe concentrate on that? And so, I all did, the right reasons. <laughs> literally, all the right <laughs> reasons. And so, uh, so then I, uh, I sort of focused there, and then ended up uh, got a big scholarship to go to the University of Texas uh, as an actor. But really, what I was doing while I was there was I was in a band. Yeah, hey, you're such a music guy. Yeah. I was in this like hard rock band. All right, what was the name of the band? It's called Native Soul. Oh, I like it. Yeah. I we made it. records. We toured. Uh, we, uh, Your Texas twang came out a little when you Just said. a little bit. <laughs> 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 um, and so I, I really thought, well, I'll get this acting degree because it's free, right? And oh, I, sure. I got to do something while I'm in Austin. And, uh, and then when this band thing takes off, I'll just go do that. And then the band sort of fell apart, as it does. And... Uh, I was like, oh, I guess... So acting was your backup plan. I guess I'm an actor. <laughs> <laughs> That's not usually how it works. No, not usually, not typically, no, but it was it was my backup plan. Um, and I met my wife while we were at UT. We met in a combined actor-dancer movement class. She was in the dance department. And, uh, and so I waited a year for her to finish, and then we moved to New York. She was a modern dancer, and I was like, well, I, I sing, and, you know, Broadway's there, so I guess that's what we'll go do. And it all worked out. And it all worked out. It <laughs> took a second, but, ever but ever? it all worked out. So what was your Broadway debut? Tell us mm, about it. I, uh, I replaced Hunter in, uh, uh, as Bobby Strong in Year in Town. Hunter Foster. Mm -hmm. And then you worked with Sutton Foster. I did, in Violet. in Violet and in The Wild Party. And in The Wild Party at Encore. So Indeed. you're basically like an honorary member of the Foster family. I mean, family. They, they think of me that way, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we should get them to call in. <laughs> yeah. Sutton, if you're watching, I know you are. You know my number. Yeah. Um, Tell me about going on tour with you in town. Well, it was particularly crazy because uh, I, I, I did like a few months on Broadway and then they were like, we'd really love you to go on tour. And I was like, yeah, the thing is, uh, we just got pregnant with our first kid. And they were like, awesome, come. And we didn't know any better. <laughs> so we were like, yeah, OK, well, we'll, we'll go have a baby on the road. Yeah, touring super easy Ooh, when super you're pregnant. Super easy. So my wife came and like sold merch. Like, oh, really? yeah, she sold, like, just Bigger getting more pregnant all the going. time. She had a, a T-shirt that said Bobby Strong's baby. Um, nice. It was, it was pretty Just cute. one of those, just, I hope. Just one. Just, <laughs> just that was, was a whole line. It was custom made. Um, and then, like, when she got too pregnant to fly, she went home to Texas and had the baby. And then I had negotiated, like, paternity leave. So I went home and hung out and then went back on the road. And then we went back on tour for another... Eight months with a four with, with like a brand new with baby, four weeks old. We came oh on the God. road. Yeah, Cleveland. So that that baby. You see, he's fifteen now. Is fifteen. He's fifteen. And he's in a band. He is in a band. What's his band's name? Called Amish Internet. Amish Internet. Yeah, and they're amazing. He's a <laughs> prodigious guitar player. His name's Hudson Pollock. You can follow Hudson him Pollock. He's on very Instagram. famous. He's and you have famous. more children. I do have more children. Yeah, I have uh, additional a, children. A Ten-year-old named Sloan and an eight-year-old named Stella. Full Pollock household. Yeah. Are they all performers? You know, it's funny. Like, Hud, my son, is super arty. Like, y y he's going to definitely... I mean, definitely, the name of his band alone. <clears throat> yeah, he's definitely going to be a performer. The girls, like, m my, my middle daughter plays guitar and sings, and sh her band had, a like, a recital this weekend, but I don't really think she's a performer. She sort of is great at it, but it's not, like, her 
dream. And Stella, the little one, also a great piano player, great singer, but they like want to be architects and engineers and stuff. So that's yeah. nothing wrong. I know. With so it, it feels like a big win. Are they excited that you're on Broadway? They are. Are they coming to see Pretty Woman tonight? Oh wow! I know tonight. Oh. It's totally appropriate for eight-year-olds, you guys. Totally. It's not. It's just, gonna be they'll fine. They'll be fine. It's gonna be just <laughs> fine. And they're bringing friends. <laughs> what could go wrong? Are you nervous to perform in front of your your children, your family? Uh, no, not not in this show because they're, they're you know it's it's like I, I feel prepared. However, the most nervous I ever get is like if I have to go do the, like the parent teacher talent show or something at their school. Oh, that's a thing. It's horrifying. There's yeah. a parent teacher talent. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Bradley Dean one time were like singing to this parent teacher talent show. We're like, this is insanely nerve wracking. <laughs> what did you choose to sing? I sing a song from Once. Duh. Oh. Sounds like an obvious choice. What was I thinking? Duh. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't guess that. I don't know why either. I feel very bad right now. <laughs> That's hilarious. In that case, we're going to take your questions because I know you have them. Do you yes. have questions? Really? Yes. yes. There are, of course, there's questions. Amazing. It's amazing. mostly about your son, but it's okay. <laughs> that would be right. You want to know about the Amish band. Um, okay, so Tina wants to know, what was your reaction about finding out that you got the part you're gonna, you were going to be joining Pretty Woman? I was uh, in rehearsal for this thing, and I went out, and my agent called, and she was like, well, you're going to be back on Broadway. And I like, <laughs> it's so funny. I got giddy. I mean, every time it happens, it's a big deal, but I was just like literally like a, a giddy schoolgirl. Charlie, I was so what does that look like? <laughs> it looks something like this. <laughs> Thank and you. then I immediately started thinking about the kitchen renovation we're starting in two weeks. So and how you won't really be there because you had rehearsal. I won't be there. Well, yeah, I'll be gone. You're giddy about this kitchen I'm renovation. I'm giddy about the kitchen. Follow Charlie on Instagram. And you'll see you'll all see about. You'll see it all. You'll see it all. Yeah, yeah. he's very excited. Well, about my this kitchen. my wife's mood board is up there now. So there's a mood board. Oh yeah, it's a new kitchen. <laughs> What's the mood of the kitchen? It is um, <laughs> contemporary <laughs> organic. Oh. Of course. I want to live there. You should. I want to live there. Amazing. I love that. <laughs> That's amazing. The next question is, they want to know what's it like backstage and how crazy does it get with this type of cast? It's They're they're a fun group, and they've been together a long time, so there's a ton of like in-jokes and um, just... Are they letting you in on the in-jokes? They are. They're, That's, and, and That's generous. It, it, it's funny. They're like trying to teach me. At, as we go along, all the things I need to know to really fit in, which is which has been really sweet. Can of them. you tell us some things you need to fit I in cannot. on Rodeo Drive, <laughs> baby? No, he's sworn really? to I've been sworn to secrecy. Oh, you have to join Pretty Woman tonight. There, there are yeah, there are a lot of nicknames that I'm still learning. Oh yeah. Oh, I want to hear about that. Yeah. Now, confirm or deny that you recently participated in a full Monty reading? That is confirmed. Oh, tell me more. Tell me more. And obviously, that's another show associated with Jason Daniel. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, uh, the, the interesting thing for me is I have, like in the regionals, I've played Jerry several times, and now seems like a natural fit. Now I'm a Reg <laughs> because I'm old. Um, but it was an amazing reading, and it's incredible to me. You know, the, the the thing with the Full Monty is it opened the same year as the producers, and so it sort of got overlooked, yeah. uh, especially with the Tonys, but sort of overlooked generally. But it holds up incredibly well. It, it the, the music is of course stunning, but its its treatment of women and gay people is still really really forward thinking, mm -hmm. and is it's still just so charming and such a great story. And Lee Silverman directed the reading, and she is one of my top five favorite people. And there's four people in my family, so that tells wow. you something. Yeah, um, <laughs> and to 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 imagine her take on it is just it's going to be great. I hope it has a life. Oh, I think it will. I like, I'm just going to take that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read those tea leaves. We're just going <laughs> to put it out there. <laughs> just going to put it out there. Yeah. Former Jerry. Yeah. And now. And now a Reg. A Reg. Because I'm old. <laughs> I didn't say that. No, but it's implied. It's implied. <laughs> I think we have time for another question. Yes. So Jamie wants to know, how does it feel like every time you go and get to take a bow on Broadway and just be able to have this be your job and be your life? You know what? It is incredibly special and... There is literally no job better in the world. And I remember when I was coming up to audition for schools in, in the area and, and looking through like the pamphlets on the airplane of Broadway shows and thinking, you know, maybe someday I could get to do that. And then the fact that I get to do it, this kid from Texas who never had any voice lessons, that can't dance. I mean, it, it's... Sell yourself, do it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I sing good now, but I still can't dance. Um, it... It really is a remarkable thing that I, it is never lost on me. 
All right, we're going to ask you the questions we ask everyone. Okay. What's your dream role? Oh, gosh. My dream role. It, it used to be Che. Oh. But now it seems like that's probably not right anymore. Um, Jerry was a dream role, for sure. Mm -hmm. So I've got to play some You wanted to roles. take your clothes off. Desperately. <laughs> but then now you have. Yeah, a so lot. We'll move on. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> that's hilarious. So Che, mm -hmm. Jerry, Jerry, Lukowski, is that his name? Yeah, uh, and in George and Sunny the Park with George, that would be pretty dreamy. Well, I have to say, you look different all the time. Because I do, you, that's true. You, you can do the facial hair thing. And the shaved head thing. Yeah, you yeah. can look like a totally different yeah. person. So I think you'd have to regrow the beard for Absolutely. Sunday in the Park. Absolutely, in a heartbeat. That'd make my wife super happy. Oh, she likes she it. She loves the beard. <laughs> I loves think that's a done deal then. I, I think, think you should so. do it. For those of you listening. <laughs> and Lee Silverman, member of the family. Indeed. So there you go. Yeah. Done. Win win. I'm glad we, I'm glad win, we cleared win. all that off. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. Charlie, thank you for joining us. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. Here's another reason to go back to Pretty Woman. Please come back. I'd love to see you. And go if you're going tonight, say hi to Charlie's family. The whole family. They're the very young people in the audience. The, 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 the kids going like this. <laughs> it is kind of a grown up musical. It is kind of grown up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, then will you take us on out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We're live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Shoshana Bean of Waitress.